Hello everybody, this is Pastor Tom. Welcome you to another study in the Word. Good to be with you again today. Thank you for joining me, and I hope that you're doing well. I really pray that you're doing well today. Um, we're going to have another session on faith. This will be our fourth session. If I will teach on faith, uh, this series on faith, oh, well, this will be ongoing maybe forever. You know, there's so much to learn about developing our faith and walking in faith and, and building our faith and and uh, just so on. And so, you know, there's a lot to this. You know, the Word of God is the complete Word of God will build faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Romans 10, 10 17. Um, but, you know, faith is not the only thing we teach on. Uh, if you're watching this and you like this, you go to uh, this YouTube page and just go up to... Uh, uh, to the, um, I like to, to call them the playlists, okay? And the playlists have different uh, subjects that we, I think some of them have 90 almost <laughs> videos on them. And you can study these uh, uh, different subjects in great detail. Really, it's, it's meant, this, uh, uh, this YouTube page is meant really to be a Bible school, a free Bible school for people who really uh, want to hear the word. You can also go to our website, faithalifefellowship.org, where we have free seminars. That's faithalifefellowship.org. You might want to write that down. Uh, you can drop prayer requests off there. There's a free seminar page, and there's a lot of teaching on there, just like uh, on the YouTube pages. And uh, But on, on there, some of them are live services and television services and stuff like that. And, uh, and you can also donate over there, become a partner with us, whatever you'd like to do. Hop into our our Twitter pages and our Facebook, Facebook Live pages and all that. And uh, so, you know, uh, you might want to go over to faithalifefellowship.org. Now, today we're going to talk about faith and, and uh, pick it up kind of where we left off last time. But when studying faith, you will must, you got to understand something. There's There's two sides to the coin, so to speak. There is the side of faith that uh, is is a wonderful uh, uh, the the getting faith the side of faith where you get faith in sweet fellowship with God in His Word in His presence intimate times at home in prayer excellent times of teaching in church stuff like that. But there's also uh, the side of faith that deals with the day-by-day -day life where we not only have received faith or the capacity for faith on the inside of us, but um, what we've heard, faith comes by hearing. But we have, we've also uh, have, have to learn the principles. We've learned the principles of faith, but we have to put them to work on a daily basis. Uh, to face the trials, the tribulations, the tests, the challenges, and the evils that each day may bring, okay? We have to use our faith to walk by faith and not by sight, uh, and we fight the good fight of faith. That's how we war good warfare. We fight the good fight of faith. So, that, the two sides, the practical side of actually putting our faith into operation on a daily basis and those sweet times where we're building our faith in, in a fellowship with God. And uh, you you have to have both those. And I want to warn you, because when you start talking and we start ministering on faith, we'll talk a lot about the principles of faith. As an example, principle of faith and confession. You can have what you say. Um, and the power that are in our words. And Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass. He'll have whatever he saith. Mark 11, 20, 22, you know. Uh, and we have these different principles of faith. Uh, you're acting, you're talking, you're, you know, the, you're, you're speaking faith. And those things are good. But I can remember when I was a young Christian, I didn't know much about faith yet because I hadn't been taught about that. But I had sweet fellowship with God. I was in his presence all the time. I was constantly hearing his word. 
the capacity was fa uh, for, was building in me. I had a lot of faith on the inside of me. I didn't know how to apply it and needed to know that. But as I began to learn the principles by reading books, by listening to tapes, by listening to other preachers, which is good, um, well, slowly but surely what began to happen is I began to become so principle-minded and, and, and I, my relationship with God kind of suffered because <laughs> all I was doing was, was uh, you know, the principles of faith, trying to, you know, speak the word all the time and make confessions all the time. And just, you know, I, and I got so caught up in that. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people that I neglected the fellowship and the sweet fellowship time, which is just as important. So you need both these things. You need to keep a balance and an understanding because you can become like a uh, parakeet, a mechanical faith person, a robot of faith, you know, and that's not really what God wants. Faith, you, 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 you just quoting scriptures, running around all the time, uh, you know, just using principles. God wants you to know him on an intimate basis. When you really know a principle as an example, you really know something, you don't have to just do it all the time over and over and over. It becomes part of you. So when it works, it works powerfully. Uh, you want to be somebody that uh, does both. Both fellowships, loves the Lord, you know, uh, because, and then on the other side of the coin, you can be somebody who has good, sweet fellowship, likes to pray, likes to spend time in God's presence, but never really studies or acts on God's principles. You don't understand how faith works. You don't understand the principles that work faith. And if you're that type of person, you might have the capacity for faith, but not much is going to happen in your life because it takes the principles of faith to work for you. Amen. I hope you can understand what I'm saying here. Um, so you need both. Now, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. As we understand the principles of faith, as an example, one of the principles of faith is the principle of speaking. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatever he saith. It's literally saying there that, <laughs> literally saying that um, you can have what you say if you believe you have what you say. In other words, you can school yourself into faith through the Word of God and your relationship with God to the point to where you really your words become very powerful because your words line up with the Word of God, and you can really begin to believe that what you say will come to pass. Literally, you will know that what you say will come to pass. So you watch carefully what you say. You learn to do that. And um, over a long period of time, you begin to develop very strong in the fact that you can have what you say, that your words are powerful, and you have authority. You can release authority and power through your words. Well, I had developed that for many, many years, and uh, still I'm developing it. But one day, I'll never forget it, I was in uh, where I'm up, uh, where we have our church uh, in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. And um, I'll never forget it because that day I was teaching on faith at church. And fa my faith was real high because when you teach on faith, of course, you're speaking the word and you're speaking on faith and, you, you know, you're hearing it too. So our, my faith was very high. Uh, and I had just preached on you can have what you say if you believe you can have what you say, you know. And so I noticed, though, that when we got out of service that day, it was very humid, and I'm very weather-wise. My wife will tell you it's one of my gifts. I can tell if we're going to have bad weather uh, in the summer. If it's very humid and I start feeling the, that ozone, I, I don't know. There's something about it. I can tell if, we're gonna, if it's really possible for us to have some bad weather. And plus, you know, you, we were looking at the sky, and I told my wife, I said, man, this, I said, this is, I, I don't feel comfortable. There's, there's going to be some bad weather come, some bad thunderstorms. And it was like there was just one of those humid, hot summer days, you know. And so after church, I was sitting there, me and my wife were commenting on that. And my 
son-in-law and my daughter pulled up, and they, they're uh, pastors at our church, and they said, hey, Dad, you know, why don't we do, why don't we get together and have some lunch and, and watch a movie or something? And I said, well, that'd be fun. Let's do that, you know. So we decided we're going to watch a movie. So we have a video store in town that's right downtown, and uh, I said, let's go over and find ourselves a movie. So as we went over to find ourselves a movie, I remember getting out of the car, and I said, man, I, I just felt that, but this is really, really going to, we're going to have some bad weather. And it's one of those days, you just know it's the, the thunderstorms are coming. And there was some uh, some uh, warnings out, you know, I mean the warnings, but watches out and everything. And I went into this uh, uh, video store, and we're in there for quite a while because, you know, it's not always easy to find a good movie nowadays. And so I'm browsing and browsing and browsing. And uh, I, I was standing by the window, and I'm, I'm looking at a video, and... I looked out the window, and at the same time, I looked out the window. At that very moment, somebody I, I I looked up and I saw a funnel cloud drop down from the cloud out of the sky. A tornado, a funnel cloud, drop down and start stirring up dust right out, not too far from where where we were standing. And at the exact moment that that happened, some lady or girl ran into the video store and said a tornado is coming. All right. Now I didn't think about it. I didn't, uh, plan to do it. Uh, I didn't use the name of Jesus. None of that. I simply, and I said it out loud. I mean, in front of everybody, God, the devil, <laughs> and all the people in the video store, I just turned around and said, no, real loud. No, we will not have be having a tornado today. Just like that. And when I said that, that funnel cloud lifted up, went up into the back up into the cloud. It went over the the town there and about 3 minutes later, which would have been too late for a lot of people if that would have stayed on the ground, uh the tornado sirens came on and we did not have a tornado. You say, you mean to tell me that your words affected that storm? I'm here to tell you exactly. And if I would not have had that faith on the inside of me, I couldn't have done that. But it wasn't something I had to do or I tried to do. It was a lifestyle that had been built in in me for many years of walking by faith. And, and, and at that moment, I was full of faith because I just preached on it and I... Yeah, I didn't have to, you know, like I said, I didn't sit there. You see these videos sometimes where people are, in the name of Jesus, we come against this storm. Well, that's fine. But uh, it, it doesn't say you can have what you say if you use the name of Jesus. It says you can have what you say if you believe you can have what you say. <laughs> and that's, so uh, that was a, the type of experience I'm talking about. Once you get these things down on the inside of you, you have the capacity for faith. But if I wouldn't have spoken that out, it wouldn't have worked. So you need both. Now, I want you to go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1 is an excellent, uh, there's a little, some scriptures in James chapter 1. Really, if you, if you study James chapter 1 fully, and you really know what it says, and you, and you meditate on it for a while, and you should do that. Just meditate on James chapter 1, and I, I tell you what, you'll learn a lot about God from James chapter 1, and you'll learn really what you need to know about faith, in a nutshell. Um, but I want to concentrate on James chapter 1, verse 18, uh, and we'll go down through this. Of his own will begot us from, uh, with the word of truth, that we should uh, be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Notice that. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay us apart. All filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if a man, if anyone be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goes his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he, he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, is he, he being a not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now notice, if any man among you seem to be religious or devout, 
and bridleth not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is in vain, won't work for you. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is of this, to visit the fatherless, the widows, and their affliction, and keep one himself unspotted from the world. In other words, uh, do what God says, the principles of God's word, and you'll be blessed. Now, I want to talk about this because this is very important, this particular scripture uh, in understanding faith. Really, in this scripture, I think that uh, you can, if you really understood it, you could glean how faith works to the max. It says of his own will, so he willed to do this. He begot us. That word begat means he gave birth to us as new creations. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man or person be in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. This new creation that God creates on the inside of us at the new birth, this new crea uh, newly created spirit man, is a new species, new creation, new species. It's a new person who has, now listen to me carefully, who has the capacity now to believe everything that God says and has the ability to act on what God says. So there's two things. First of all, you must understand that because you've been begotten of God or you've been born of God and you have been made a new creation, okay, now listen, because of that, you are now a believer. That's why they call you a believer. That you should call yourself a believer, not a doubter. You're a believer. In other words, now on the inside of you, God has created something, this new species that has the capacity to believe whatever God says. The capacity to have faith in whatever he says in his word. And the ability to release faith or act on faith whenever he tells you to do so from his word. Both of those things. So we are born of God with the word of God. It says this, that he, we are born, new, these new creation, this new creation is created and is begotten uh, uh, through the word of truth that we should be the first root of his creatures. Now, I want you to notice this. We're born again by the word of God. We talked about that in our last session. Jesus is his, and his word are one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So literally the word is born on the inside of us. His, his name is Jesus. He comes on the inside of us, the living word. We were given birth. We were made a new creation by the Logos, the word, Jesus, the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creation. You see that? Interesting. The word creation or creator here means a colony of created things that will be built up, a colony of new species. So God has created us to be a colony of new creations, new species, the first uh, fruits of his creation. So you are recreated spiritually by the Father of lights with all the ability you need to live the Christian life, to be victorious, to believe what he says, and to act on what he says. Believe, act, victory. Believe, act, victory. This is what he's saying here. You have to believe, have the capacity of faith, put faith within you, so you have the capacity to believe what he says. When that's there, when you act on that, okay, when he, uh, as the word of God tells you to, however the word of God tells you to, you put your faith into action, that will equal victory. It will equal a manifestation of the promise as we stand on it in faith. So verse 19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Now here, we understand that we are to develop this uh, ability to understand importance of words. You see? Let every man be what swift to hear you first you've got to understand you got to you got to be swift to hear god you got to learn how to listen to god you got to learn how to listen to what other people say right now i want to focus on that we have to learn to hear from god well how do you do that you develop that by fellowshipping with god through his word and through prayer 
and through listening to the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, who will always and only lead you in line with the Word of God. Now, outside the Word of God was some kind of crazy revelation. Only uh, with uh, and in line with the Word of God. That's where you're safe. So, every person needs to do these important things. We need to be swift to hear God, swift to hear, and then you need to be slow to speak, understanding and thinking about what you say, because you can have what you say. In fact, you are having what you say, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe you can have what you say or not, whether you understand the principle, it's working for you, mostly in the negative. Most people, it's working in the negative right now. So you need to turn that around and start working it in the positive. Remember, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we're slow to speak. Think about that. Okay, because death and life are in the power of the tongue, all of that, we need to understand how important our words are. And then it goes down in verse 21. As we go down to, to verse 21, I want to focus on that. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. This is important. So he says, lay apart these uh, sinful things. And he says, receive with meekness or with me humility the engrafted word. The, the word engrafted here means something engrafted from another source. It's really God that's engrafted into us. Like I said, you eat an apple, that's engrafted into you. You see, but God plants, it's almost, you're God's garden. He'll plant a seed that's engrafted into you uh, through the word of God. And it will grow and produce something. That's what God wants. He wants the seed of God's word to grow and produce something on the inside of us. This engrafted word or this seed is able, the Bible says, to save our souls. Now, somebody says, well, our soul, it, that, that, that means being born again. No, no, we're born again in our spirit, man. You become a spiritual new creation. Our soul, our mind, our will, our emotion, our thought process, processes are in all of that has to be uh, saved. The word saved could be translated healed, restored, renewed, right? And, and, and that, it, that, that process is like Romans chapter 12, verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, restoring, saving of your soul that you may prove what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. See, <clears throat> your soul has been damaged and your soul does not work right and the, your thought processes are all messed up. When we come to Christ, God starts the renewing of the mind, restoration of the soul process, which means the saving of the soul, which means uh, kind of like uh, if a guy goes out here, you know, and where I live up here in Door County, we have all these beautiful places where you go in and you have all these antique furniture, you know, and to the untrained mind, you might think it's junky old piece of furniture. And some far, uh, farmer may have a bunch of this antique furniture out in his, his barn somewhere and somebody will come up who knows what they're doing, say, hey, I'll give you $50, $50 for that old piece of furniture there. And the farmer will go, hey, yeah, you can do, take what you want here, give me 50 bucks, sure. You can have that. And he'll take it. The expert uh, furniture restorer sees, sees something in that furniture, takes that furniture to his shop, washes it up, cleans it down, strips all the paint off and all the old stuff off, sands it down, does some things, maybe fills in some cracks or whatever it needs to be done there, but then restores it. And literally... It's restored because it's hardwood, solid furniture. It can be restored back to even as good, if not better, than it was when it was first made. And then he takes that thing and sells it for $2,000 after he spent $50. And that's what God does with our, our soul. Our soul has great potential. Our mind, our will, our emotions, our thought processes has great potential to work with our spirit, which is a new creation in Christ Jesus. But that part of us has to be trained. Our physical body, too, which needs to be presented. Our physical body must be presented unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our spiritual or reasonable form of worship, you see. So that all works together. But here he's talking about the saving of our soul. That comes through the word of God. Then verse 22, it says, 
but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So you see, when the word of God comes into us and, be, and is there, the capacity for faith is there. The renewing of our mind is, is, is taking place. But we can't just hear what the word of God says and not do it, or we will become what the Bible says is self-deceived. It's like a guy who looks in the mirror and then, you know, needs to, he realizes, you know, I need to comb my hair. I need to shave today. I need to whatever. And he just walks away with the understanding when he saw that he had a revelation that he needed to comb his hair. He had a revelation, you know, faith came, then he needed to shave his beard, put it that way. But uh, he never acted on it. He just walked away and forgot about uh, how he looked. And if we do that, we don't act on what we're learning out of the word of God. We become self-deceived. What happens to us is we become a hearer of the word of God and not a doer. And this is dangerous because... When you hear, you have capacity for faith. Faith is there, but if you're not doing what it says or you're not acting on the principle, the faith will stay within you. It will never act, be active in your life, never never be generated in your life, and never get, you won't get any results, and you'll start getting frustrated. How come my prayers aren't answered? How come you know, my Christian life is drying up? How come I don't feel... Uh, and, and, and I'm not experiencing the things that I know I should be, you know, no, you have to act on the word. You're not going to have anybody get healed in your ministry of life unless you lay hands on the sick, you know, unless you, 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 you preach on healing and you, you operate on the principles of healing by laying hands on people, operating in the gifts of the spirit, whatever the case may be. See, that's doing the word of God. You can't just, you can't just understand that is possible to do that. You have to act on it for it to begin to manifest. So it's it it's the two things. It's developing a close personal fellowship with God through his word and prayer. And then it is acting on the principles that the word of God tell us and teach us that releases faith through uh, the faith that's active on the inside of us that causes results in faith. Well, I've run out of time. I hope that helped you. And if it did, please share this with about 10 people. And remember, go to our website, faithoflifefellowship.org. And uh, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you do that over there. Drop by and, and check it out. Uh, make sure you subscribe. If you like this, share it. And remember this. Always remember this. Feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Until next time, God bless you.